Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Chris Lloyd, and I'm joined here by Dr. Nina Cleveland. We're going to be talking about the Homeland Security Program today, some of our security studies, classes, and offerings. And since Dr. Cleveland is a content expert in emergency management, we're also going to talk about that program briefly. If you have any questions, anything comes up during this session where you really want to focus in on that topic, use that Q&A section or submit it through the chat, and we'll make sure to cover it there at the end. So really briefly, just to go over what we're going to talk about today, we're going to give you a little introduction to Tulane, what Tulane SOPA is, what our course offerings and programs of study are, some of the ways that we help to support student success, those logistical pieces where you actually learn how to apply, learn about tuition and financial aid, and then we'll have room at the end for a Q&A. So you guys will really be the drivers of that last part. So the questions that you raise will really inform that discussion. Dr. Cleveland, can you tell us a little bit about your background before we jump in? Absolutely. Um, I am originally from Georgia. My uh, uh, PhD is in health promotion and behavior. I know that sounds kind of weird, but uh, my research work was in disaster preparedness and response, especially for vulnerable populations, and that's my research area and um, my area of focus. Uh, I have been in academia for about eight years. I started out in um, uh, public health emergency preparedness and response at the local level in Georgia, and then worked with CDC as a contractor before I entered academia. So that's me in a nutshell. That's just a brief sampling of Dr. Cleveland's expertise and background. And as we get deeper in this, we'll talk a little bit more about the special place that her work has in this region and maybe even to your region. So we'll get into a little bit of depth about the Homeland Security angle, the emergency management piece. Uh, as for me, my name is Chris Lloyd. I'm an admissions associate here at Tulane SOPA. I work with all of our prospective students as well as students once they've actually started that application process and once they've gotten into Tulane SOPA. So for those of you who are still evaluating, I'm the person that you'll want to reach out to to help connect you to advisors, program directors, make sure you get all those questions answered that you have. So really briefly, uh, I want to talk about the background of Tulane SOPA. So Tulane was founded in 1834 as the Medical College of Louisiana, and it first started offering continuing education classes in 1886. So that was really a way for adult learners to get access to some of our programs, get a high quality education. So it was really a way for Tulane to demonstrate that commitment and to be able to give something back to the community of New Orleans. And since then, we've grown and changed quite a bit. So we've really uh, reset our offerings here in 2017 to where we refocused on having a strong online education component, building uh, programs of study that are really based around industries that are in demand, uh, both locally as well as nationally. So an example of that's our Homeland Security Program, which was developed very closely with a number of different organizations uh, national, uh, locally as well as nationally. So what you're finding is that you're gonna get an education that reflects the needs of today. You're not gonna walk out of SOPA and go into a job role where what you've just learned is outdated or doesn't apply to what you're actually doing. Uh, one of the really great offerings we have is that we've got 100% online master's programs. We'll be talking about those today. And those are a great way for those of you who aren't in the New Orleans area to really learn a bit more about the programs. So typically our classes are gonna be offered online or on campus. Um, at the master's level, you're looking at where you may have a hybrid, but you can do entirely online coursework. Most of our classes tend to be evening, so a typical course will be something like a Monday night, 6 p.m. to 8.50. And then for those of you who are looking more at the bachelor's programs, that's where you might have some on-ground component. If you're a transfer student and you've completed some of those core classes, you're not really gonna have to worry about that as much. But definitely talk to us, reach out. We can help you figure out what your situation is and what sort of coursework you have, and then we can connect you with that um, academic advisor who's really gonna be able to focus you in. So I wanted to start by talking a little bit about what we actually offer for Homeland Security at the graduate level and undergraduate level, and then talk a little bit about the certificate programs, because I think that a lot of people out here probably haven't heard much about our certificate programs, so it can be really useful for us to just kind of start broadly. So 
Could you tell us a little bit about how the bachelor's is composed for the Homeland Security program? So we have a, our bachelor's program is really geared toward folks um, who are, you know, wanting to complete their uh, undergrad degree, move up in their uh, current placement. Um, we also have a uh, number of traditional students in that program as well. So um, it is comprised of uh, both um, uh, Homeland Security and it has a little bit of emergency management in there. So it's very much a generalist degree. So you could graduate from this program and go into either emergency management or um, uh, Homeland Security uh, locally um, or entry level at the federal, you know, it, it, in the federal sector. Um, so that's what that uh, program is geared towards. Um, our uh, Masters in Homeland Security is geared towards uh, folks who are maybe already in the field um, who have their uh, undergrad degree and want to move up into leadership. Um, the difference in these two programs really in in short in you know kind of a nutshell are that the undergrad program really uh, is boots on the ground kind of stuff. At the graduate level, um, we are looking um, to give you skills not only in, you know, in, uh, homeland security, you know, upper level, you know, uh, moving up to upper level management um, and meeting those requirements, um, but we also want to give you skills in leadership and in um, and prepare you for that upward um, mobility. Also, the, uh, that master's degree is also really good for students who are, um, we have, uh, that are maybe retiring from a, um, from a particular uh, uh, career such as military or um, uh, fire service or EMS and want to start a second career. So you may have that bachelor's already um, but you want to do something a little bit different. Um, so, you know, you go into Homeland Security um, and, you know, emergency management as well. And then, uh, you know, it can help, you know, launch you into that kind of new career. So um, the degrees are um, really formulated for various different kinds of students, no matter where they are in their career path. I think you hit on something really interesting there, which is about that pipeline from people who are maybe coming out of the military, first responders, and want to move more into maybe a project leader, managerial, uh, administrative role, where they can use those skills and help maybe to develop policy, lead teams. And that's something that I think we're seeing with our students is that a lot of people are coming in and they're getting recognized for the military experience they have, maybe their EMS experience, and they're able to get credits out of that. Absolutely, that's a very good point um, in two ways. Number one, you know, if you have uh, you know, different uh, activities uh, within your career or all those FEMA courses you may have taken, um, you know, there may be a way for you to get some credit through that, through our portfolio process. Um, and it helps save you a little money. The other thing is, um, you know, we have different programs that give discounts for certain uh, folks in this, uh, different sectors, such as military, and a new one coming up is we'll be able to give uh, tuition discounts for uh, folks in, um, in first responder careers, such as fire, EMS, and uh, police. So for those of you who might have like an employer who's potentially paying for your education, if you're telling them that you've already got a 20% discount off the top of that because of your background and because of maybe the service that you've given, that's a really wonderful way to reduce that out-of-pocket cost, move yourself into a higher paying role, and give yourself more flexibility in what roles you can move into. And whether that's a bachelor's or a master's or I think a really great new thing that we've introduced is that four plus one program. Absolutely. I'm glad you have that up there, Chris, because 
this is, I mean, just from a cost saving perspective, this is a really good deal. So um, the way that works is at the bachelor's level, um, at a certain point, you can start taking uh, master's level courses and have them count towards your master's. So you reduce the time that you're in a master's program to one year. Um, and you know, you're already in school, you, you've got those study skills fresh and you know, it can help you just move on through. So for example, you know, if you are a, um, if you're a first responder uh, career such as you know, fire, EMS, uh, public safety, police, and you know, you're going from an associates and you're working on your bachelor's, and you want to, you know, you know that you want to do upper level management, you know, do that four plus one, it will save you some money. And, um, you know, you will come out of it with the skills uh, to be in Homeland Security, uh, as well as some of that, uh, some of the leadership skills. Um, so, you know, that's one of our offerings that, you know, I'm really most excited about for our undergrads. I think that four plus one really gives people uh, an opportunity to really expedite their time here. And when you're combining that with the ability to earn credits for the work that you've already done, that's really great for you. You can accelerate your time here, get back out into that role that you want a lot quicker. And some of the ways that you can also do that is without doing those full bachelor's programs, you also have great certificate programs. Can you tell us a little bit about that difference between the graduate certificate versus like a post-baccalaureate? Absolutely. So a graduate certificate is after you um, have a bachelor's and maybe you're thinking about a career change and, you know, you know, um, I think I like Homeland Security or I think I like uh, security management or emergency management, um, but I'm not quite sure. So we have stackable certificates so that you are, they're each four, uh, uh, four classes and you can start out uh, with um, kind of the basic level do those courses if you like it oh hey I like it like to take an advance um, you take the next four courses and those count to a, a master's degree so you're not you know you're making progress towards a master's degree you know as you do this if you want to do that um, another another scenario may be um, you say you have a bachelor's in um, say criminal justice or um, or uh, public administration something like that and you really want you know maybe you're already in like a working in a hospital and, or another agency that you may be interested in wearing that emergency management hat at that, in, at that particular agency, um, but you don't quite have the educational background, you can take one or two of our certificates, either in you know, security management or emergency management, and, and have that in addition to your undergrad degree, and that might make you more, you know, more eligible for those particular positions. It's just, it's a very economical way to, to get that uh, education boost uh, to help you be where you want to be in your career. Yeah, those post-baccalaureate certificates are really great for if you want to add that new skill set to where you're getting that, you know, undergrad level perspective that someone with a bachelor's would be getting too, and then maybe use that towards a graduate program after, you know, instead of going back for a full bachelor's and taking all those core classes or things like that again, doing something to where you're really honing in on that content that you want to focus in on. And then uh, something that we don't really have up here in depth, but I, you guys probably see the reference to it, is that graduate certificate in sport and event security and emergency management. Mm -hmm. uh, the interaction between Homeland Security, um, sport security, um, emergency management, even our information technology program, there's a lot of overlap there to where there's similar course offerings uh, that are those courses outside of your core classes to where you can take an elective in another program, to where you can do a concentration, and you really start to blend those skills. So maybe if you're someone where you're wondering like, well, how does Homeland Security fit into 
the work that I'm doing now, the type of work that I want to do, and maybe you're in that sports space, maybe you're in that event security space, and these are ways for you to build those skills, learn more about it, and then see if there's some like higher level degree you want to work towards. One of the things that we've rolled out over the past year is uh, more of a focus on offering certificates that are going to be something that you can uh, stack towards that graduate level degree, and then also blending in other fields. So we've got, we've got a partnership with the Center for Sports Studies here to where you've got different sports studies masters that are available, and then that sport and event security and emergency management piece. Mm -hmm. If you look at the New Orleans area, look at what's going on tonight actually at 7 p.m. Tulane will be playing Houston. Yeah. In a city like New Orleans with this many visitors, this many people, this many huge events, that's where you're seeing that instant impact. Yeah. You're walking into a stadium where someone has had to thoughtfully curate that experience for you to ensure safety, to ensure that there's good placement of all of these necessities. And that's where you see that real interaction. For those of you who haven't been to Mardi Gras, that is a huge example yeah. of balancing you know, the challenges of the job with those really, really practical skills. You're not just going in and getting theoretical skills out of this. You're getting something where you have a real chance to apply it, and especially if you're local. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kind of to your point on that, Chris, one of the, um, one of the things that drew me here as an uh, academic was our faculty are primarily adjuncts. There's only two uh, full-time professors, uh, myself, as the associate director and um, our director. The rest of our faculty are adjuncts. They're either working in the field or retired from the field that they're teaching in. So they're bringing all of this real world experience into the classroom. Um, they can tell you what it's like to do those security plans for those events or to do a risk analysis for um, an event like that or yeah. for a hurricane in New Orleans. Um, I mean, you've seen all of the the, the, hurricane, the hurricanes that have been going through in the uh, Atlantic with the tropical storm that just uh, is over Texas right now. Um, these people actually work in those, um, those particular uh, um, of careers and bring that bring this, uh, that experience into their classrooms and you can learn firsthand. They're also, it provides wonderful networking uh, opportunities for you. Um, you know, getting that fit in the door, if you're not sure exactly, you know, if you're wanting to change careers or look for different jobs, um, you get connected with them and you get connected in the network. Something that I think is really cool that uh, you don't typically see in a lot of programs is there's a little bit of a feedback loop here with our students to where we have students that come to us, maybe they work in a field that's related or in an office that we haven't had contact with before. They go and they advance in that role or maybe they move into a higher level role somewhere else and then they come back to us and share that experience, share that knowledge. So we have students who are working in high level positions in the Gulf Coast region and they're able to actually come and give our students the benefit of their experience they're able to invite our students to some of these disaster mm -hmm. scenarios. So you have a real opportunity to go out there, engage with people who are in your field, network. And then there's people out there who are doing hiring who know the quality of our work. Exactly, exactly. So uh, for those of you who have those practical questions about like how many credits and things like that, uh, typically you're looking at 120 credits for a Bachelor of Arts. So that's whether you're looking at Homeland Security, Emergency Management, and then you've got that four plus one program where you're adding those additional 30 credits of those Homeland Security courses where you have a lot of online options or maybe you're going with uh, emergency management. And then from there, that's when you're really looking at moving into these positions that we've been talking about. You know, some of the, some of the successful students that we see that are out there are going and getting jobs as emergency management specialists or even as assistant directors and those high level positions where you're able to really take the benefit of your experience and improve the city you're in, the region you're in. Absolutely. Um, there, this field is opening up uh, Homeland Security, uh, especially in the 
cyber realm is blowing up. Um, they, there are all types of positions uh, for folks with interest and background in cybersecurity um, in the Homeland Security career path. Um, I was just in a meeting with, or in a uh, info session with someone from the State Department, and there are career paths to the State Department. Um, you know, everywhere with the Homeland Security, you're, you know, you're really looking at um, uh, government, uh, federal government level positions, uh, it, also state level uh, government positions. Uh, within emergency management and security management, you're also bringing in the private sector uh, as a career path as well. That's a really interesting interaction that you hit on there, which is the cybersecurity piece. So earlier, I briefly mentioned that overlap with our information technology program, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, is yes. that cybersecurity piece. So for those of you that have kept uh, your eye on the news over the past few months, you might remember the city of Baltimore was held ransom by a yeah. cyber attack. The city of Atlanta was held ransom. A uh, number of cities in Louisiana and Florida were just recently hit in the past 60 days. Local school system was hit. Um, and it's, it's getting to be almost a daily occurrence that you hear of some sort of ransom or yep. breach. Yeah, and that's not something that's strictly confined to that IT space. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to just be a information technologist to be able to work in that space and have that homeland security background, you know, that's something to where when you're developing policy, when you're able to actually work at a high level, that homeland security background, that emergency management background is going to be really strong for you because you're going to know how to read, research, write, synthesize what you've learned and turn it into something that's usable, that's an actual piece of policy, that's a directive, that's something that helps to shape, you know, the response that you're taking to these sort of events. Absolutely. So for the 4 plus 1 program, uh, I've got some information up there on the screen for anyone who's interested in it, but uh, basically what you're looking for is we're looking for someone who has an interest in the field, wants to go in and tackle everything at once, and work their way to that master's degree, have that sense of continuity. You're looking for a cumulative GPA of around 3.0. So for those of you who have significant professional experience, that really helps to offset if maybe your GPA is not perfect. Not everyone is a 4.0 student or getting every single class right. Everyone struggles a little bit, so we're not going to hold you hostage to a GPA. But when you have that professional experience, it definitely helps to offset it. So to highlight some of our other offerings, uh, with the MPS, you're looking at 10 graduate courses. So for a typical student, you might take two or three courses in a semester, and that's a pretty big course load because you're going to have quite a bit of reading and writing required of you. And that's what's really going to help to shape those skills that you have, really give you something that when you're walking out, you can show that to the people who are interviewing you or when you're applying for that new job. It's where you have something where it's like, well, here's a sample of a policy memo that I've written. Here's a sample of something that I've done that directly applies to this field. And so we've talked a little bit about some of these uh, job roles. So, you know, intelligence community officer, counterterrorism analyst, you know, these are the types of roles where you see them represented on TV and they're in these huge command centers. And then we hear from students that there's these command centers that really exist. You can have this, you can translate that image that you have yeah. and that goal for yourself into something actionable with something like a master's degree to where, you know, you might not, you might not have that, uh, really strong professional foundation, but you've got a bachelor's in the field and want to grow that and be able to move into a professional field. And that's where the master's can be really great for you. Yeah, It can give you a lot of leverage to where you can say, I have skills that reflect the industry now, that reflect both private industry, public, and academia. It's going to be a blending of all of those different realms. And Dr. Cleveland was really hitting on that earlier to where we have these adjunct faculty who come from very different backgrounds. So some of them actively work in the field. Some of them are professors. Some of them split that role. Mm -hmm. And so you're not just getting this ivory tower syndrome where you're so far removed from the actual work. There's that blending of the practical and then the academic. Absolutely. Um, and kind of expanding on, those, on that point, um, with the networking aspect, we know we have connections, um, you know, with different agencies here locally. 
um, and a lot of whom are reaching out to us for um, student help with different projects. We have a very strong commitment to service in our program. So we are um, building that by reaching out to our community and our industry partners to ask them uh, you know, what they might like to have student help with, either through a uh, independent study internship or a, um, our cap, you know, a capstone project or a um, service learning course. Um, so we were actually, uh, we had our industry advisory board meeting and we uh, were able to do that at, um, at, uh, um, at Shell downtown and, you know, got to see what emergency management looked like uh, in the oil and gas yeah. industry. So, you know, we brought up during that meeting, you know, hey, what are those projects that you would love to have done but you don't have the personnel resource to do? Um, this is a role students can play. So they were like, oh yeah, we could do this and we could do that. And, and so there were all kinds of ideas. So there would be, uh, it's a good opportunity to not only, you know, end that marriage of the academic and the practice of while you're in an academic program to be able to connect and, and get some spirit, experiential uh, opportunities as well. And that's, I think, a great opportunity for students to really be able to work for and work with the people who may potentially employ you one day mm -hmm. to where you have that opportunity to see, is the culture a good fit for you? Do you have the right skills? Maybe there's a role you want to aim for within there that maybe you weren't aware of before you got that opportunity. So those capstones, the service learning, it's a great way to be able to sort of tailor yourself towards what the industry is looking for. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was at a meeting where, you know, corporations like GE and large manufacturing corporations were talking about their need for security professionals, for people who work in the homeland security space, emergency management, people in cybersecurity, that there's a lot of roles unfilled. And when you think about all of those material assets that these businesses have, when you're talking about maybe oil derricks or uh, talking about uh, some of like these infrastructure pieces of the telecom industry. That's not all there is to it. There's those digital assets mm -hmm. too. There's so much more out there. And you really have to think about like, how can your education connect you into that position that you want? And so with this, you have a little bit of an opportunity to structure that concentration or those elective courses to get a little bit of that skill set in another area and really be able to blend it. So like, well, you may get an MPS in uh, security management. You could take courses outside of that field. You could take yeah. those emergency management courses for that elective that you're taking. Maybe you focus that capstone in on a topic that you've really discovered while you were working uh, through your master's and that helps to direct your professional experience going forward. So we have many people who are coming here to really prepare for that next step. And so that might be that director position. That might be that analyst position. You know, anywhere between, we can help you to get there. And one thing that I think that we offer that's really unique is we have really responsive advising here. Yeah. So Dr. Cleveland advises quite a few students. And that's a rarity in a program to where you can connect with a program director and actually have some of their time and not have it be something you've scheduled a month in advance and it feels hurried. But to get that actual one-on-one -on -one time, be able to sit here like Dr. Cleveland and I are talking, that's rare. To be able to do that with your advisor without scheduling a month in advance, that's very rare. <laughs> so, you know, the academic semester just kicked off not that long ago and people are rushing to see their academic advisors. And where I went to school, I had to schedule quite a bit out in advance. I didn't get amazing service and I only had one way to meet them in person. Our advisors are available by phone. They're available uh, by Zoom teleconferencing, like what you're watching on today. And they're also available in person and they can get the Uptown campus, the Elmwood campus. So you got a little flexibility there. And that, having that access, that's really crucial. That student support piece. Yeah. We, that's an excellent point, Chris. We have an excellent student support services here. Uh, from anywhere from 
academic issues or you have personal issues going on that's affecting your academics, um, we are here to support that. Uh, we know that, you know, as someone who may be going back to school and holding down a full-time job, life happens. You know, you may have married with kids or, you know, single parent doing it, which is my case. Um, it's not easy. So we always feel that it's very important that you have that kind of support um, to enable you to finish. Yeah, and you hit on something interesting there too, which is uh, you kind of alluded to like what the composition of our classes is like. Mm -hmm. We have a really wide variety of people here, whether it's the students who just finished high school and are going towards a bachelor's, whether it's someone who's been a professional in the field for years and is looking to update their skills, or someone who's finished that bachelor's coming in and they want to continue on that track. That variety and diversity of student experiences can improve your experience in the classroom get different perspectives. When we're talking about things like Homeland Security, emergency management, one of the things you have to think about is you're delivering these services to people. You have to be work, able to work with people and understand where they're coming from and maybe their uh, cultural or regional background and how that can influence the response. And having that kind of sensitivity is something that is really important. And that's a skill that you can learn through that classroom experience where you get that diversity of experiences or through the academics where you're taking courses that are really gearing you towards that, to where you have a kind of a holistic education that gives you a, a wide perspective. Um, so for those of you who are asking some of those questions right now in the Q&A, we're gonna loop back around and talk about those here in just a moment. Uh, if you have questions about the PBC, uh, I think it's definitely a great opportunity for you to connect with an advisor and find out how that can help you to really get to that next step of your career. Uh, with the certificates, you're really getting that bachelor's level experience. So that's something you can build upon, go towards graduate school, go towards uh, maybe a graduate certificate and really build from there. So that's a great way for those of you who might, might have time obligations to be able to add to your existing skill set or transition to an entirely new discipline. And that's something that we see with many students where Maybe they went to college straight out of high school, didn't know exactly what they wanted to do, maybe ended up with something like, I don't know, a, a history degree, uh, and then they changed in their field. So for those of you who are considering maybe that career shift, that's where talk with an advisor, see what your background is, see maybe what credits you might have already accumulated through your life experience. So the graduate certificates are something where we briefly talked about those. Uh, with the graduate certificates, the stackable nature of them is really the main thing that you want to focus on. That when you're stacking these certificates, you're putting them towards a graduate level degree, and that's something to where it allows you to really take on the coursework in your own terms, but also where you have a clear achievement after the courses you've taken. You're walking out with that certificate, you can show your employer. So you're not going to an employer who's potentially paying for your education and saying, you'll see the results in X number of years. You're able to say, you will see a result in this many semesters to really shorten that time frame. So instead of giving yourself that long runway, you're able to accelerate a lot quicker. You're able to get up to speed and really be able to succeed in a role while tackling these, uh, these topics and then moving into that higher level degree beyond the certificate. So I wanna briefly hit on some of these student support and services. Uh, we talked a little bit about our academic advisors, uh, the credits for prior learning is something that we're going to focus in on in just a moment. And then we also talked about our faculty. Uh, I feel like the last two points on here are the things where maybe we haven't given them enough, uh, enough depth. So I think there's a lot of people out there who are probably wondering, how can we actually help them reach that career? So some of that is interactions that we might have with state and federal agencies, but part of that is also our career advising how we're able to build on that network of Tulane alumni. Mm -hmm. So Tulane as a whole has a career center and has career advising, but the School of Professional Advancement also has its own specific career advisor to where Ms. Cynthia Washington is able to work really closely with our students and ensure that they're getting that one-on-one -on -one time to maybe develop and improve a resume while they're in school, help to find an internship, help to connect them with an employer when you're looking at that service learning or you're looking at graduating and going out into the field, or maybe 
after you've already finished your degree, you want to come back, really be able to update that resume and show how you can sell yourself. And part of the really wonderful, uh, part of that really wonderful offering of the career advising is the access we have to Tulane alumni. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the questions that I saw that we did get raised was talking about what sort of work we have with federal, state, uh, any of these government agencies. And we hit on this a little bit earlier. Uh, some of our students are actually now out and working in those agencies. And that's where that network of Tulane alumni really comes into play. Uh, so, you know, in that uh, general way, you have people who know about your work and have examples out there. But then in that specific way, you also have someone who went through the program, knows the faculty you've worked with, maybe they've been able to provide letters of recommendation or you know, give a testament to the type of work you've done, and that gets you a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about some of those interactions we have with those federal, state, government agencies, the type of work that our students might be doing, either while they're here as students or afterwards? Absolutely. Um, we have a number of former students that are in different levels of uh, government, uh, federal, state, local, um, as well as private sector, more for the emergency and security management folks. Um, for example, uh, one of our alumni is a, a, a deputy director of uh, NOSEP, uh, the emergency management uh, office here in New Orleans. So um, we've been working with him uh, in connecting students with him uh, while they're here to you know, work on different uh, things that projects that they're doing. Like at any given time, they're planning either an exercise or have an event coming up. So you know, they could really use the extra hands. Um, we also have a good connection with the FBI office here locally, which would uh, uh, go more towards our Homeland Security folks. Um, they have the ability actually in this office to direct hire. So anyone that is uh, interested in an FBI career, we can connect with them. Uh, we, you know, we have any number of local emergency managers that are affiliated with our program that may be, um, you know, you'll run into some of these uh, as uh, your professors in your courses. So again, I know we talked about that earlier, but, you know, during the course of your, your studies and you know in particular courses if something's really interesting to you talk to that professor uh, see if they can you know who they can connect you with um, uh, out you know in the field that they're in so there's I mean there's all kinds of ways that you can get connected uh, with the uh, community that you want to be in career-wise yeah, that really it helps to turn it from just a simple lens to a magnifying glass for you where you can really get an opportunity to make yourself into a really high quality candidate with access to a large network. Mm -hmm. And that I think Dr. Cleveland's really underselling like how amazing that is. The fact that the FBI can direct hire our students, that's huge. There are not a lot of programs out there where there's even direct hire possibilities. Yeah. So the fact that we're, one of the largest agencies in the United States is able to do a direct hire of our students based upon that they know and understand the quality of our work. That's absolutely huge. So for those of you who are maybe in that career transition where you're thinking, you know, I want to move into that FBI type role. I want to move into that national, that federal role. That's a foot in the door right there for you. And that's huge. We also have as a part of our uh, of program, we have a speaker series in spring and fall where we bring in different um, uh, folks from the industry and different fields to talk to our students uh, about their field and you know recruit if they want to um, and you know to give students an idea of what it's like to work in that field and that's we've gotten um, so last year we had someone from uh, NYPD uh, come in and talk to our students. We had some. We had FBI uh, come in and and recruit um, and talk to our students about their career pathways. 
Uh, we also had uh, folks come in from my background is, you know, public health emergency response. So I brought in um, folks from DHHS and uh, the public health service to talk about their career pathways and what they do. So um, we also, you know, that's another way that we connect students with uh, industry folks. So I just want to get through some of these logistical pieces with those of you that are tuning in, because I think this is one of the really important pieces for you is how do you actually go through the application process? So for those of you that have joined us today, we're gonna to be waiving your application fee. So whether you're looking at that undergraduate or graduate program, that's money that you can put towards transcripts, books, whatever you want. That's money that you don't have to worry about and that you can start this process and really get some skin in the game without having to really uh, take on that financial responsibility for it. So you've given us your time and we wanna make sure that we're uh, saying thank you for that. Uh, the last piece that you'll really need are, you'll need a clear photo of a government issued ID. So that's your driver's license, your state ID, something of that nature. It needs to be unexpired and needs to make, uh, be something we can clearly read. So the picture looks a little fuzzy to you, definitely resubmit it or scan it. And then for your transcripts, we can take those both digitally or physically. Uh, digitally is always gonna be faster for you. If you're sending those digital transcripts, you can send them to SOPA records at Tulane.edu. That's S-O-P-A records at Tulane.edu. With those, as soon as we get them, we upload them and they're considered official. With anything that you upload, that's gonna be unofficial. We can use it as part of the evaluation process, let you know whether or not you can be admitted based upon those grades you have on there. But you're still gonna need those final official transcripts. For some schools, they're still gonna prefer snail mail. So you're gonna send it via the mail to Tulane SOPA. Uh, you can put that subtitle as academic records, and you're gonna send it to 800 East Commerce Road, Suite 100. That's in Harahan, Louisiana, with a zip code of 70123. Don't feel like you need to rush to write this down or anything. We're gonna be distributing this webinar to you a little bit later. And then this is also all available on our website as well. So if you have any questions about how to actually go through the transcript piece, we'll follow up about that after. So the application deadlines have been standardized to where August 15th is the deadline for fall. So you've just missed out on that opportunity, but spring is coming up. The spring semester typically starts there in that first week to early second week of January. So with January 1st, you're still cutting it a little close to the start date, but you do have time to actually still get in. So if you're still evaluating, you've got a bit of time. I really recommend though, if you're interested in spring, Start on that now, even if you're maybe finishing out a semester or you don't have those official transcripts. That way, when your registration ticket comes around, you're actually ready to go and register for it, rather than picking up uh, with those classes that maybe have already been selected by students and it's kind of the leftovers. Uh, at the undergraduate level, you know, you're definitely gonna have a lot more people vying for seats than at the graduate level to where it's not gonna be as big of an issue for you to get the course selection you need. You know, we're gonna work with you to make sure that if you're a graduate student, you're gonna be able to uh, get to those classes that we're directing you towards. And then for summer, you're looking at May 15th. So the summer session, some of those can be either that full session or you can take those sh uh, shorter, like six week sessions. And that's a way for those of you at the bachelor's level to really increase the number of credits that you're getting over a semester so that maybe doing 15 uh, credit hours in the semester isn't as insane as doing that in a traditional semester like during the fall so that way you can get a little bit of a jump on maybe your fall semester and give yourself a lighter load when things might be a little bit busier if you have kids or obligations that really kick into high gear in the fall and then the last piece is talking about the tuition and financial aid so right now for the undergraduate level you're looking at 474 a credit hour and at the graduate level you're looking at 1039 a credit hour a lot of students will use either financial aid, federal grants, federal loans. So the typical FAFSA that you fill out for any school is still what you'll do. That way you get access to any of this assistance that's out there for you. And then there's also a couple of other opportunities. So some of them are scholarships. So for those of you who are uh, retired military or officially separated from your unit, that's where you can apply for like a yellow ribbon scholarship. Yellow ribbon scholarship is great uh, for our service members who want to be able to reduce that out-of-pocket cost so when you're combining that with the gi bill or any of those other educational benefits 
you're actually able to really ensure that you're limiting that cost out of pocket. And then uh, as Dr. Cleveland alluded to earlier, we have discounts for active duty military, veterans, teachers, Orleans and Jefferson Parish employees. So those first responders are uh, considered as part of that. So like our EMS, our, uh, our police, uh, whether you're a reserve officer in the military, uh, so maybe you're, you're um, Army Reserve, National Guard, those sort of things, you potentially still qualify for discounts. And that's where you'll want to check with us and see, reduce that out-of-pocket cost. And then when you're using things like the credits for prior learning, it's another way to uh, lower your cost. So we talked about this earlier. At the undergraduate level, you can take home up to 24 credits from a portfolio class. So when you're looking at a portfolio class that costs about $1,000 and then you've got um, the actual three credits that the portfolio class provides, that's a really quick way to reduce out-of-pocket cost, get credits, and get recognized for the work that you've done outside of the classroom. So that's work experience, community service, military training. I believe our EMTs, based on the EMT training, get 15 credits of electives. You know, there's a lot of opportunities there to really get recognized for the work you've done. And at the graduate level, you're looking at up to six credits for the portfolio assessment. So if you're looking at a cheaper price than what you would pay for that same number of credit hours, and you're also getting recognized for the work you've done, limiting your time in school. So for those of you who are doing career changes or maybe want to update your skills, you're not setting that long runway for yourself. You're really giving yourself an opportunity to get to where you want to be quicker. So now is the time where we typically go through any of our questions that we've been raised so far. Uh, earlier, Mark was asking about the interaction between our program and some of these federal and state agencies. So Dr. Cleveland talked about that a little earlier, but I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to go ahead and submit uh, so either use that chat or that Q&A function. We'll give you just a moment to where if there's something that comes to your mind, we can make sure to answer it. But while we're waiting for those, I just want to take a moment and really highlight some of the things that we talked about. So this session was meant to talk about our Homeland Security program. But as you may have noticed, there's so many different roots that really come out from that tree. And when we're talking about emergency management, information technology, um, uh, the, uh, a whole emergency and security studies umbrella. Homeland Security has a lot of interactions with that, and there's a way for you to really find that pathway for yourself and your interest and define it within those fields. And people like Dr. Cleveland, are they're gonna be the, that kind of mentor for you where they can help you understand. She's got that experience in the field. She's worked at a high level. She has multiple degrees. And we won't hold it against her, she's a Georgia Bulldog, but uh, she brought that experience here so that she could help to be able to have an impact in the region. And that's something that she was talking about earlier is you have a really wonderful way to take your passion, your interests, your skills, and really see that impact. The Gulf Coast region has so many opportunities for you to take these skills that you have and apply them. Yes. Absolutely. And each of the security management, homeland security, and, and emergency management, all three, um, New Orleans, this area, uh, this, uh, this cache of uh, instructors are some of the best that you could ever find. I mean, uh, it's amazing uh, what the area and um, we have to offer in terms of uh, learning about these these different content areas. And the other thing is um, each one of our adjunct professors does this because they have a calling to take what they've learned over the course of their career and help build the new workforce um, to give their uh, experience. And it's, I mean, it really is a calling to them um, and they have a passion for it. I know that, you know, I have a passion for teaching. There's nothing uh, more exciting to me to get in a classroom and, uh, and start those discussions and hear what students have to bring from their own experience and 
you know, to see those light bulbs go off when something clicks for them. Uh, so we, you know, we are all very passionate about what we do and it shows in, in our classrooms. We want you to follow up with us, find out more about our programs and let us demonstrate that passion that we have for this service, for this uh, academic opportunity for you. We want the best for our students and the faculty, the program directors, the advisors, the people like Dr. Cleveland regularly demonstrate that passion here at Tulane SOFA. So since we don't have any questions, and there's no one in the chat who wants to really cover any topics, we're gonna go ahead and end this session. This will be distributed to everyone. Uh, so if you registered for it, you'll get the email link showing you the final webinar that's posted to YouTube. And we'll also make sure that you're recognized as attending this so you can get that application fee waiver. If you have questions, follow up with me. My email address is on the screen as well as my phone number. If we have any phone in listeners, I'll go ahead and just spell it out really quick, but it's C-L-L-O-Y-D three at Tulane.edu, cloyd3 at Tulane.edu. You can always give us a call at 504-865-5333. We'll be glad to talk through your questions. Dr. Cleveland, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Thank you for having me here. I've enjoyed it. Remember everyone, tune in tonight and see Tulane play Houston and think about how you would be a great addition to this student experience. Bye. Nice.